Miss Stephanie and I, our class has been growing like crazy in there. And then somebody said yesterday, you know, y'all just might have to switch up and change classrooms. I was like, oh, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> but we have a, a marvelous time in there with those kids. Kids will trip you out, man. They're just, they're just awesome. And I just love being with them. And if you want to learn something, go be in a kid's class. Be in a kid's class. They'll teach you a few things. They'll teach you a few things. Okay. All right. Linda, if you tell me when you're ready. If you're ready? Okay. Well, we greet you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for tuning in with us today, for being partners. And um, we are here, and Miss KK is a minister of the gospel, and she is going to be sharing with us. She pastors a church, and we're thankful for her. But she is also a part of Open Door been a part of Open Door for a long time, a long time, and she is a great treasure, and she's going to be sharing today in the Word of God. As pastor is away, he is in Missouri, and will be flying home tomorrow, so we just thank you for being a part of this service today, and just tune in with her, and follow her, and she breaks the Word before us, and we receive the Word of God, and it's not going to return void. Amen. Amen. His Word is powerful. And it will not return void. So we're going to pray for her, and we're just going to open up our hearts to receive. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for my sister. I thank you, Father God, that she is such a blessing and a gift, a treasure, oh God. And I thank you for the word that is, is so deep inside of her. And Lord, as she opens up her mouth, I thank you, God, that her tongue will be as a pen of the ready writer. I thank you, Father, that your word will not return void. But I thank you, God, it will accomplish where it goes, Lord. There's power in the Word of God. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God. As we hear and receive, Lord, we're transformed in our spirit by the Word. And I thank you, Father, that she will just flow and that she will be at such peace. And, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will just flow and minister through her, Father God. I thank you for the gift. I receive her today. And we just thank you for this service and for this time. And we ask your blessings upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There you go. Amen. Praise the Lord. First, I would like to give honor to... Pastor John, and thank him so much for um, allowing me to speak here. So it is, it, it is an honor that he would even uh, choose me. So I thank God, thank God for him seeing the Christ in me. I thank God for this church. I thank God for everybody who's sown into my life, who's sown Christ into my life. And I give honor from uh, even birth in a ministry, Salt of the Earth Ministries in Great Falls. So uh, that's what I want to do, give honor where honor is due. So uh, God has been dealing, me, dealing with me about the wilderness, the wilderness. Um, and he's shown me the wilderness is a place of training and learning and not punishment. When we was coming up, uh, we would sing a song. I hear a cry in the wilderness, in the wilderness, in the wilderness. And the song said, come on out, out of the wilderness, out of the wilderness. The song said, it's dark, you can't see in the wilderness. God said, if you told me, if you can't see in the wilderness, you're feeding from the wrong tree. The wilderness is a place of learning and training. It is not a place of punishment. He said, let my people go that they may worship me. The wilderness is a place of learning and training. It's not a bad place. The wilderness is a place where God gets the wild out of us. Where, he, where we begin to focus on Jesus and get the focus back on him and off of us. When the wild comes out of us, we can see Christ. We can see Christ. So he showed me that the wilderness, when Moses, Moses saw the burning bush in the wilderness. The wilderness is not a bad place. He said Elijah sought refuge and received guidance in the wilderness. The wilderness is not a bad place. He said John, John the Baptist says, repent and prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. He's the way, the truth, and the life. The wilderness is a bad, not a bad place. The wilderness is a place of learning 
and training where he teaches us to see his son, Jesus Christ. Even Jesus went into the wilderness and he said he responded to Satan by saying it is written. The wilderness is not a bad place. So he took me to uh, Paul, Galatians 15 and 7. It said, but, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I may preach him among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. How many know flesh and blood can't reveal the son to you? Only your father in heaven, he reveals the son. Flesh and blood can't reveal, cannot reveal it to you. We can only, I have to learn that we can only um, feed from other, other people, but we can't live out of their will. Christ will, Christ will, uh, God, he will reveal his son in us. It said, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and then I return, I return again to Damascus. So Arabia was a place, a, a desert place where he went. The wilderness is, is not a bad place. But first he said he had to be, uh, first he was cut, uh, uh, cut, cut off from his first birth. We, are, we must be cut off from our first birth and we must be born again to reveal, to reveal his son in him. God wants to reveal his son in all of us that we just always my prayer that we would preach Christ more clearly and more boldly that we bought, draw people to Christ Jesus and not ourselves. So the wilderness, once again, the wilderness is not a bad place. It's a place of learning and training. We must first get the focus back on Jesus. It cannot be on us. He told Peter, he said, Peter, Peter said, when I saw him, I asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You must follow me. We must follow him. Follow him only. And once you in training, he will only show you his son. Now, I was, I felt like, I, I know I was calling into the ministry a long time ago, but I did not know that I was supposed to preach Christ Jesus. I, I had to be taught that. I taught that. The Bible said that we preach not ourselves, but we preach the Lord Jesus Christ. When we preach ourselves as a servant only, we're to be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, how I got here, they uh, we was doing this thing in Great Falls where they wanted people to put scarecrows all on the poles in Great Falls, but they wanted you, they wanted us to represent our business. So they asked me, would I do a scarecrow in Great Falls? So I told them, yeah, I do bail bonding. So I did a bail bonding called uh, Carecrow Bonding, and I was proud of my little scarecrow. I really liked my little scarecrow until I looked over at the other crows. I was fine with my scarecrow. I don't like this crow. Till I looked over at the other crow. Then I thought something wrong, was wrong with my crow. And God said, wait a minute. What was in you that told you your crow was fine until you looked over there at the other crows? See, I would tell us to mind, mind, mind your own business, but I need you to mind Christ's business. I need you to keep your eye and your focus on Christ Jesus. What he has given you is enough and what he has put in you is enough. If we just live out of our own well, it, the rivers will come springing up. He said, out of your bellies will show rivers of living water if we begin to trust the God that he has put in us. Now, the tabernacle was built in the wilderness. That's when Christ wants to build us up in him. And on the tabernacle, we had these skins called badger skins that, would, that jumped out on me. I said, badger skins, badger skins. Why, why, what is the badger skin? What is the badger skin? Now, it says the theologians and the researchers have a problem, and they're debating because why would Christ, why would God use an unclean animal on the temple? Well, why would he use you? Why would he use you? But first, he had to kill it, clean it, to dwell in it. That's what he did to the badger. To kill it, clean it, to dwell in it. So I began to search this badger. Search this badger. Like, why Why the badger? 
And the more I searched this badger, then I realized the nature of the badger had to die. That was your old man. He had to die for him to dwell in it, for him to be even, for him to dwell in us, that that nature had to die. They also used badger skins on the Ark of the Covenant. Now, he said they were debating back and forth. Debate. Well, it's not up for debate. It is not up for the boat. If he said badger skin, it is so. It is so. So let's figure out, let's study debating it. Like, God, what do you mean here? Show me what you're talking about with these badger skins. So I began to research the badger. And I, once again, he said, first you had to kill it, clean it, to dwell in the badger. So that was the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, he had to, once he cleaned his skins so that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of skin, remission of sins. So he, the blood had to be shed there. He showed me a picture of Christ. Now, he said the badger is born blind. Helpless, furry, and withered. Keep these three words in your in your mind. Born blind, helpless, furry, and withered. He showed me a picture of the withered hand. The withered hand. And the right hand was a hand that he healed. The right hand of favor, that's the hand that he healed. And the badger is a pest. You ever somebody badge me, say, stop badgering me, stop badgering me. Want to do it over and over and over just that. And I, re I remember just when I was young, getting saved over and over and over again. Or they badgering me into this, you this, and you that. I just felt like I was badger. I was badger. Or I was pressed into it. So it become a pest. And he gave me, this is what God gave me. And I love all my brothers and sisters, not talking about my brothers and sisters at all. But he gave me the word a pest was, and this was without the revelation of Christ. So don't get me wrong. Don't go out and say I was talking about uh, who God called because I'm not. But he said a pest was apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teacher without the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without the revelation of Jesus Christ. The withered hand has to be healed and we have to preach Jesus Christ. If the withered hand is not healed, then it will become a pest. They will become a pest. He said they were born blind. Nicodemus said, Father, can I enter in the, can we enter in uh, the uh and, and, and be born? He said, No, no. If you enter in the same way, you're gonna come out the same way. You must be born again, but we gotta be born of the spirit. We got to be born of the spirit. John 3 and 3, Jesus answered and said to him, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. We must see righteousness, peace, and Holy Ghost in Christ Jesus. We was born, we were once blind, but I was once blind, but now I see. Once Christ gets in us, Christ is the light. Christ is the light through all of this mess and every bad, every skin that was on there. It was what's, what, what was going on on the inside that made it beautiful. It was what's going on the inside that make you beautiful. The Bible says no beauty that we should behold him. It was what's going, it's what he put in the inside of all of us that make all of us beautiful. So let's get past these badger skins because he done clean it. The badger, the badger is good now. He can use the skin. He told Peter to kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord. Well, let me tell you something. You cannot unclean what God has already cleaned. You cannot unclean. I know we try over and over, but you cannot unclean, you cannot unclean what God has already cleaned. So the badger, again, I want to get that. We're we, we still getting the wildest out of the badger. Romans 11, 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou went, and thou being a wild olive tree, were engrafted among them, and with them partakers of the root of the fatness of the oil. Now those branches were broken off, but they were also we was grafted again in Christ Jesus. We know what we're we're no longer wild anymore. We're no longer tossed to and fro if we stay in Christ Jesus. It also said the badger was fearless. When I saw the word fearless, 
And I said, fearless, without the wisdom of God spells trouble. Fearless, being fearless without the wisdom of God, that spells trouble. And that will get you into a lot of trouble. We're supposed to be fearless with the wisdom of God. And we go in and we preach Christ more boldly and more clearly to draw people only to Christ Jesus and not to ourselves. It said the badger is raised by his mama. That showed me a picture of the soul. That's why I know you must be born again. You got to be born again of your second birth. We must be regenerated. We got to be regenerated. It said the honey badger does not even care. It just takes what it wants. We can't go in taking the things of God. He gave them to it freely give. We freely receive it. If you receive it freely, you'll give it freely. If you think you're working for it, you want everybody else to work for it. You want everybody at work. The, the parable in the Bible said they came in at the cool of the day. Guess what? They got all got the same pay. I don't care if you came 10 years ago. I don't care if you came one second ago. One said you get the same thing everybody else got. And his name is Christ Jesus. There is no big eyes and no little use or none of that. We all get the same thing. And his name is Christ Jesus. It is not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Now, it also said this badger stands, and also he's able to confuse the, uh, confuse the animal. God is not the author of confusion. He's the author and finisher of our faith. We got to do away with, we got to do away with this old badger nature. He already did away with the old badger nature. And we said, when I saw that, he showed me that we take the scriptures and we twist them to our own destruction. That's the confusion. We just take this. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. The Bible is a perfect book. It's just that we don't understand it. We fearless without the wisdom of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing wrong with that Bible. He'll open this thing up to you. If you begin to see Christ, he'll open that whole Bible. When I look at this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I'm looking for Jesus Christ. And if I don't see it at the time, I don't fit, don't force it. I go to where it's alive. I learned that from my pastor. I go to where it's alive, and that's where I stay. It also said that bad, the badger has a nasty odor. Flesh stinks. Self-righteousness. Self-centeredness. All that. We can't use none of that. We got to do away with all those natures. This is about Christ and Christ alone. It said if the badger is captured, it is not going down without a fight. Well, my pastor told me Christianity is not a fight. It is not a funeral. It is not a fast. It is, a, it is not a famine. It is a feast. Well, we feast on the Lord Jesus Christ. It said this badger will feed on anything. Anything. We must feed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of we receive and seed from every which way. And Lord, I went to the service. And when I tell you they jumped and hooped and hollered, and the woman was on the floor acting like a snake and everything else. We, when I tell you we feed on anything, we feed on anything. But when Christ comes in you, the light comes on. The light, you ain't going to be tossed to and fro. You're not going to be tossed for, to and fro by every winter doctor. And she went and she was just getting them to jump up and down and jump up. And every time she came up by me, she said, K. Hill and I. This is a K Hill night right here. You're not gonna get me. No, no man. You're not gonna get. Me. Hey, I'm not gonna be duped into that. I'm not gonna be duped into that. Every time that she went past me, she did. You right. Keep right on trucking. Keep right on trucking because I am not the one. I am not the one. We're not here to just uh just just. just I feel like we're just raping and robbing God's people when we're not preaching Jesus Christ. We're just raping and robbing them. It says the badger has tough skin and do This is the skins that Jesus had to use. Now, it also said that the badger uh, skin is so tough you can't even get a grip on it. But see, the kingdom of God shall always be in our reach. We should always be in our kingdom of God should always be in our reach. I remember I felt like it was just so hard for me to just grip it and grip it. I was always just felt like I was just just dying, dying, dying because I was never good enough. You're right. You're not. But he is. So I began to trust his goodness and not my goodness. 
It said it is notorious for digging in the ground. The dust is the serpent's meat. And it said it is always tilling the ground. The badger is always tilling the ground. We are not to work. We're, we're not to work. We're supposed to trust the work that he is or he has already done. What he has done is enough. Now you begin eat to even work more than you worked before. But now you're working in peace. You're working in joy. Guess what? You get joy. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. It's a joy to get up and worship him. It's a joy to get up and praise him. It should not be a struggle. It should not be a struggle. If you're struggling, you're working. You need to sit down and rest. Well, you need to sit down and work, and then you'll be able to get up and worship him freely. It also said this badger had a natural curiosity. Don't feed from that tree. Don't feed from that tree. Guess what tree he fed from? She fed from the exact tree he said not feed from. Has a natural curiosity. She still fed from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that's the nature we have to do away with. That's where it comes from, the badger nature. It is said it's nosy. It puts his hole, it's put the nose in every hole we can find. We be busybodies. We ought to mind Christ's business and Christ alone. My Christ business and Christ on it said, I'm gonna keep on studying this badger and keep on studying the Bible. The Bible said that it go in to look for things that sting and bite. I'm so glad that Christ has taken the thing out of death. He has taken the sting out of death. What am I what have I to fear? What have I to dread? But leaning on the everlasting arms, and his name is Jesus. Now, it also said this badger has real short legs, and it, it crawls low to the ground. We're always in a lower ram, always in the outer court. That ain't where we got to sell it. That ain't, that's not where we are. With the, under the right training and the right leadership, he should bring you on into the holy of holies. You don't have to stay low to the ground. You come on, come on up a little higher. He ain't going to come down there where you are. He ain't going to come down there where you are. Dust is a serpent's meat. Come on up a little higher and feed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it also said this badger, ears is flapped down, closed off. Now, I heard my pastor say, careless ears will become careless ears, and careless ears will become carnal ears, and carnal ears will become closed ears. Cut off from grace cut off from grace no ma'am you should always be bringing you to grace bringing me to grace it says the honey badger has venom uh, the the cobra is always trying to get away this this is why god used these skins right it said the cobra is always trying to get away from the honey badger it said just this his poison can't the poison of the cobra can't even get through the honey badger it's durable and it was tough that's why he used the skin he came to destroy the works of the devil that's what he did. He came to destroy the works of the devil, to, to protect the seed that was inside of him. Oh, make no mistake about it. God knows exactly what he's doing. It said this honey badger run back and forth. It, it run backwards. You know, anytime you're going backwards, you ain't fit for the kingdom of God. Anytime you're going back, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. We must go forward and move forward in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. He has cleaned the honey badger. The Bible said that we were wild, but he has brought us in. It also said this, that his head was so thick that he had to use an axe. You had to use an axe to chop it off. Thick headed. Thick headed. This thing must be about Jesus. You cannot get the big head. Anything he gave to you, he gave it to you for others, and to, he gave it to you first and to share for others. Copy, and I, I don't know where this comes from, but copywriting a, ministry, copywriting a sermon. I don't understand that. It wasn't even yours. They should lock you up for plagiarism. <laughs> that's what they should get locked up. We want to lock people up. It wasn't your sermon. God gave it to you. They should lock you up. You should be the first one to get locked up because it's not yours. 
I don't understand that. He gave it to you to share. Thank God for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We are no longer unclean without the shed of blood. Without the shedding blood, there is no remission of sin. Thank God for healing the withered hand. So he also moved me over. Now, once he cleaned the badger, he also took me over to the, uh, the book of Ezekiel 16 and 10. This is once he cleaned. This is his bride once he cleaned it. That's why I told him to come over and take your shoes off. But I didn't, I gave you something else to walk in. We are to walk in Christ Jesus this morning because he has cleaned, he has cleaned his bride up. There is nothing wrong, nothing missing, and nothing broken this morning. It was supposed to always walk out of what he had done and not we done, not what we had done. Because you're gonna always come up short. You're gonna always come short. This thing is about Jesus. The kingdom of God is at hand and it's right inside of you. Stop looking outwardly and begin to look inside. He put, he put his son inside of you. He has married you. He said that God, when God married us, they gave us a ring. This, this is what he showed me. The ring was a perfect fit when he gave it to you. The ring was perfect when he married you. He, three things that happened. He said the ring is too small. Well, you were always digging out here in the dirt, but it was a perfect fit when he gave it to you. Or you cannot fit the ring anymore. Well, you done gained too much weight or swelling up with pride. Show me a picture, swelling up pride. Or you have taken the ring off and you have departed the faith. You have departed the faith. Come back to Christ. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the rain was a perfect fit. Thank you for the Christ, for Christ he has put inside of all of us. Romans 14 and 7, for the kingdom of God is not me to drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Colossians 1 and 7, to whom God, it said to whom God, to whom God would make known that is the riches of his glory and the ministry, uh, ministry uh, among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hebrews 13 and 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And, and God, God himself shall be with them and be their God. Acts 7, 48. These are the scriptures that he gave me. How be it the most high God dwelleth not in temples made with man's hand. God is dwelling in his people, and you're his feet today. You're his hands today. You're his mouthpiece today. Everybody in here, there is a need. I get this all the time. What's my purpose? What's my purpose? Your purpose is Jesus. Your purpose is Jesus. Why was I put here for Jesus? He needs your hand. He needs your feet. He needs everything about you. It, it, and like I tell him, you're going to be used by one of the two. You're going to be used by one of the two. Just as good as God, if just as good as you can be God's hand, you can be Satan's hand. Just as good as you can be uh, God's, uh, God, God use these eyes, Satan will use them also. It's no different. You decide. He told you to choose life. Choose life. So he gave me this poem. He gave me this poem called Steps. I'm going to share this poem with you. I'm not long when it. I know when, I know when it's time. When, when the spirit let up, it's time for me. I don't care what time it is. When the spirit let up, it's time to go. So he gave me this poem. It's called "When It's the Four When Four Footsteps Turn Into Two Is When Christ Begins to Live in You." He said, "For the times that I have carried you, longing for you to one day carry me, hoping that this day you will see that I was always your inner peace." 
He said, oh, how I searched. Oh, how you searched for me outwardly when I was always inwardly. He said, oh, how I begged and begged and said, please look with your heart and not your head. He said, oh, how your eyes will never be able to see that you must be drawn to come to me. He said, you, are found, you finally awoke unto righteousness and said, oh, okay, I am your feet and you are my head. Four steps turns into two equals Christ now living in you. He has cleaned the badger and he begins, he needs your body and he lives in you. He, he need, you need to live, move, and let him be our being. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> that was good that was so good stand with us if you would that just ended too quick I could have just sat here for a little longer that was good real good praise God God is good did you receive this morning? Amen. God is so good. Amen. We thank you for tuning in with us today. We pray that the word touched your heart and has made a difference in you. And we just thank the Lord for Miss KK as she shared with us today. That was an awesome word. Awesome word. So we pray that you have a super great week. Tune in with us on Wednesday. God bless you. Have